Now, let's look at non-ideal behavior. Well, non-ideal behavior means that <laughs> these things won't hold. So, for example, if you mix water and ethanol, water and alcohol, you'll have a volume that is not double the water and alcohol you've mixed. In fact, to be less than that. 100 milliliters of, say, scotch and 100 milliliters of water will not give you 200 milliliters of solution. It'll give you less than that. And in fact, that's if, if you're a bartender, you might run into that problem because somebody says, hey, you know, I ordered uh, two ounces and there's only like an ounce and uh, three quarters. Work might not might, might be equal to zero, Q, delta U, and so on. So those thermodynamic quantities are not equal to zero if they're non-ideal behavior. And then another definition of our ideal behavior for two liquid components was that the total pressure follows Raoult's law. Uh, Raoult's law, recall, was this. So if you don't get straight lines, if you plot total pressure versus mole fraction of one of the components and it's not linear, well, what does that mean? That means it's non-ideal, non-ideal behavior. So the mixture does not follow Raoult's law. Let's take a look here. Uh, here's an example of a couple mixed couple deviations of Root's law. What we're plotting here is a total vapor pressure. That's the partial pressure of two component of both components, P1 plus P2, as a function of composition. In this particular case, we were using one and two. Component one goes from zero to hundred, and therefore component two goes from a hundred to zero. Straight line, Root's law you can have what's called positive deviation from Raoult's law where the total pressure is greater than that you expect from Raoult's law. It's positive deviation. Or you can have negative deviation from Raoult's law where the total pressure you measure above the solution for a particular composition is less than that you would expect for Raoult's law. This upper or lower curve, if you see that, then you find uh, solutions, the, then, then you would conclude that the solutions are non-ideal. And in fact, most solutions you make by mixing two liquid components are non-ideal. And then you have what's called an azeotrope. An azeotrope is vapor and liquid have the same composition. Actually, let's just go and take a look at what we mean by that. This is a temperature, and we switch the ink color to black again. This is temperature versus composition. So this is a temperature composition. And remember, for those kinds of plots, up here, the upper region is where you have vapor only. The lower region is where you have liquid only. Whereas if you look at pressure composition plots, then these two things are switched. For pressure composition, we have pressure up here and vapor down here. And then there's a region between those two one phase only in which you have two phases, vapor and liquid. What we looked at before, we had a dew point line. We had the dew point line. So if we look at temperature composition here, we had something like this. Here we'll go from, so usually you draw an axis, a vertical axis out here at one and we start at zero. And then we had something that went down like this. And the region here was liquid plus vapor. And so there's all this region here. That's what it looked like for this is not characteristic of an ideal solution. But if you have an ideal solution, you would have something like this. On the other hand, if you see something like this, where there's a point here where, in fact, the two lines, the dew, the dew point line and the bubble point line, come together and meet. They don't cross one another. And that right there is an azeotrope. So at this particular composition, you'll get a mixture which there's no separation between the dew point line and the boiling point line. What does that mean practically? Well, let's say we start at this particular composition and we uh, increase the temperature of the liquid and finally we get to boil. We collect the vapor. We then condense the vapor into a liquid we then boil that again, condense and boil. But what you see here is that you're never going to get pure substance. In contrast here, if we say it starts this composition, so we boil, condense, boil, condense, boil, condense. Eventually you get over here on this axis. But for an azeotrope, you get stuck right here in one particular spot. And you can't, because they're meat, you can't go above that. Okay, so this is the, if you start over here, that's the maximum concentration you can get for component X or Y. We'll call this component 1 or component 2. So this would be, say, X1. 
All right, let's, oh, well, maybe if we start over here. So let's start over here. Okay, so we're going to boil, and then we're going to get the liquid, condense the liquid, boil, condense, boil, condense. So you start over the other side, you're just going to end up at the same place, the azeotrope. An example of an azeotrope, by the way, is uh, uh, ethanol and water at 95% ethanol and 5% water this forms an azeotrope so if you start with a ethanol water mixture and do this try to separate out pure ethanol from that you can only get up to 95% ethanol because at 95% ethanol 5% water you form an azeotrope and you you can't purify it anymore you're like right there so that's why if you go into a liquor store for example and buy a try to get pure ethanol, what you'll get is 190 proof, which is 95% ethanol. That's azeotrope boiling point is lower than the boiling point at either end here. This would be pure component two, and this would be pure component one right here. And then the azeotrope then would boil at a lower temperature than either one of those. This kind of behavior in which the boiling point of the azeotrope is less than that of either pure component is called a positive azeotrope. Let's consider another azeotrope. This would be like this, and if that was called a positive azeotrope, this one is called a negative azeotrope. In this case, the boiling point of the azeotrope is greater than the boiling point of either pure component and let's change to our notation. This would be mole fraction of component one. So this would be the boiling point of component two, where you have no component one. This would be the boiling point of component one, where you have no component two. And the mole fraction will go from zero uh, to one. But let's uh, consider, let's start, say, with this composition, and we're gonna heat it up. We're gonna go up here to the boiling point, and now we're gonna boil that, that composition. We're going to collect the vapor over here, and we're going to condense that vapor. We're going to uh, boil that, condense, boil, condense, boil, condense, and so on. And eventually, we're going to end up out here with pure component two and zero component one. Let's see what happens if we, say, start over on this side. So let's say start at this particular composition. There it is. We're going to boil it, so there's the vapor. We're going to collect that vapor, condense it to a liquid, boil, condense, boil, condense, and so on. So we'll end up over here, where now we have pure component one, 100% component one, and no component two. The point here is that no matter where you start, you'll never go past the uh, azeotrope. So here you always regress back to pure component two, no component one, or if you start on the other side of the azeotrope, a boiling point, you'll uh, start here and you regress back to pure component one and zero component two. 